Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Autodesk Virtual Academy, AVA. AVA is our dedicated learning program hosted by Gative and broadcasted every week throughout the world to users in the Autodesk design and manufacturing industry. Thank you for joining us today. Very excited about today's session. So many of the companies that we work with use Autodesk Vault to manage their data. Uh, you may have seen a lot of these in past AVA sessions about Vault. It's one of the most requested sessions that we have. So we want to make sure that all of you get everything you need to make your workflow more efficient. So today we are showing uh, tips and tricks in Vault through the trenches, if you will. Uh, today's session is going to be presented by Javier Chavez. Uh, he's been with Kativ for quite a long time and is very uh, experienced with Vault in implementing and supporting our customers. We also have Jose, who is more on the maintenance and support side for our Vault customers as well. Many of you I see have worked with these two in the past. I thank you all for joining us today. So I'm going to pass this off to Javier so he can really get us started in a moment. I just want to remind everybody that we want to keep this as interactive as possible. Feel free to type any comments or questions you have in the chat box. We're going to have a dedicated Q&A session towards the end of our, our presentation today uh, where we can answer many of your questions. So go ahead, Javier, take it from here. Cool, thanks. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into the uh, presentation portion of this. And um, we'll start by you know, just talking about why we did this. Um, basically, if we take into account you know, all the different places we visit, right? we, get, we see lots of things. We see you guys using uh, the tool in different ways. And so that's why we named it Tips and Tricks from the Trenches. It's because it's really coming from you. We're just kind of gathering all that information and sharing with you uh, some of the different things we've seen. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and um, just maybe introduce myself a, a little bit here. Um, it's been a while since I've done an ADA, uh, but you can see I'm an AE here at Kativ. Uh, I've been here 12 plus years just delivering these types of services. And, and some of those can uh, include consulting services. So there's quite a few times where I've been, you know, on site with a customer actually side by side working on their products with them. So with that said, uh, we'll go ahead and continue here. So tips and tricks, you know, from the trenches, we'll start off by tackling productivity tips. These are the things that I see, you know, people using at different sites and I've kind of concatenated all these things I've seen and just try to put them into one short little presentation, things that maybe most people aren't aware of, right? And these are the things you use day to day, typically in the client. There might be some server set up as well to get these uh, tips to work. Uh, but the next thing we'll go ahead and tackle is the productivity of other users, people outside of the engineering uh, environment. So that's typically a thin client user. And if you're not familiar with the thin client, it's basically a web-based way to access the vault. Very limited on things that uh, can be done there. But that's a good thing. That This is meant for shop users, maybe, uh, again, users that are outside of the engineering environment. So we'll tackle that next. And then the last thing we'll tackle is more security related, right? We want to make sure that your data is secure. And um, out of the box, Vault creates a backup a certain way. Uh, and it works. However, it does need to be monitored just to make sure that we don't lose that data. And so we want to customize that to make sure that the backups run, uh, and if they don't run, if there's some failure, we want to make sure that we're aware. So uh, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and get started with um, maybe taking a look at your uh, workspace environment. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Vault now, and I'm going to go ahead and start off in Vault 2017. Okay. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and take a look here at a, uh, a folder there we go. Uh, we're going to take a look at a folder. And you can see here, just by looking at the symbols, that this particular file I have on my workspace, and it's out of date. The symbol you see there with the two arrows shows that it's out of date. Okay. So what I want to get to here is keeping your workspace clean. What you don't want to do, right, what you don't want to do is open up the wrong version of the file. And so if I go to Inventor, right, and I go ahead and click Open here, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open one of these files here, ebox, IPT, and you can see that it's gray. Okay, this is an old version of it. It's since been modified to be anodized. And if I just open it directly from Inventor, just opening it uh, directly from my workspace, it shows me this gray one. This is what I would get. So I'm going to cancel out of that. The right way to do this, right, is to do it with your Vault utility. So 
if you get accustomed to doing that as opposed to clicking open, I know if you have not used Vault for a long time, you're very used to doing this and opening it locally. Again, we're getting the wrong version. Okay. So I choose open from Vault, right? This is gonna be a little, uh, a little bit different. This is actually gonna open it from uh, directly from the Vault here. So let me go ahead and get that window back here. There we go. So we're getting this directly from the Vault now. This is a different dialog box. And there's the same e-box that even shows me that it's out of date, but as soon as I click open, you can see it's, it's supposed to be blue. It's gonna go ahead and download the right version for me. There we go. So that is the right version. It basically overwrote that for me. And you could do the same thing when you're working with assembly. So if I'm working with an assembly or anything that has to do with my interaction with you know, grabbing a part and using it in my uh, inventor files, uh, again, what I wanna do is I wanna place and there is you know, just a regular place command that places from your local folder. Instead, you want to place from Vault, right? And you're going to go ahead and uh, open that up directly from the Vault, and you'll make sure that you get the right file every time, right? So again, this is out of date. If I go ahead and place it, right, this gasket is the right version of the gasket if I do it from Vault. So big difference between uh, doing that and those uh, two different methods. And I'm going to come back to my client and show you another tool to help you do this. So files out of date here, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh and it shows that some of them are up to date. I still got a few files out of date, okay? And you could easily have in your workspace, you know, files that haven't even been checked in the vault. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you another tool that gets ignored quite a bit at the time. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the workspace sync tool. So if I click here, right? This wants to basically compare what's in my workspace to what's in Vault, okay? And so I've got some settings here and it says some files have expired, they're unmanaged. Uh, what's that all about? So let's take a look at the settings and we'll take a closer look. So here, managed files are files that are already in Vault. And if you haven't touched them in two weeks, it's gonna go ahead and clean them up off your workspace. Unmanaged files are files that um, haven't been placed in the vault. Maybe you're doing a what if scenario, you're not ready to actually put it into production. Maybe you've got like a personal project that you've put in that workspace. As long as it's never been involved, it's an unmanaged file. So you can decide, you know, what the expiration date is. And if I put, you know, two weeks here and click OK, you know, some of those files go away. Uh, again, if I click back here one more time and change it back to zero, for unmanaged files, and you can do it for managed files as well, it shows me, hey, here's some files that I have yet to put in Vault. And at the very least, I'm aware that, hey, there's some junk in, in my workspace that I might need to clean up, and you could use this tool to clean it up, or maybe there's something I forgot to check in, right? So at the end of this, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, I'm gonna leave those files there. So I'm gonna change my expiration date. Uh, but you'll notice, hey, it, not it notices that this file, right, one of the remaining files in that design is out of date. It's going to download it and overwrite it and sync it up with what's in the vault. Now, if it was more than two weeks old or, or so, it would sim just simply get rid of it, right, assuming that, you know, they're the same version. And it, it would let me know through this dialog box, okay? So there it is. It downloaded the latest, greatest version, and my workspace is cleaned up, okay? So... A um, couple other things we could do, right? Let's go ahead and customize maybe how we search for things, how we find things. So uh, at this level here, right, uh, I'm gonna take a look at um, how I find my file. So very first thing I'm gonna do is maybe customize and decide, hey, where is this locally? We talked about our workspace. We know these files get copied locally, but where, okay? You can right click and choose go to working folder. That's one way to do it. Uh, but something I see people do uh, on site is they go to tools, options, and this little checkbox here, show working folder location, will change your interface to show the actual local workspace for that file, right? So as you navigate through other folders, right, you can see the workspace and where that file would exist if it got copied to your uh, workspace. Okay. So I'm going to come back here. The other thing we want to do is maybe customize the columns that we see, right? Make them more relevant to us. So there are saved views here, 
here's a default view, a page view. These come with the software. And you know, if you right click on the columns, you can add these uh, different fields. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. Instead of just adding the fields, I'm going to save this setting and make it customized so I can recall it whenever I want. Okay. So this is the way it looks out of the box. Let's go ahead and define a custom view. Okay. So I'm going to create a new custom view. I'm going to call it my uh, Kativ uh, view. Okay. And now that it's there, I'm going to go ahead and modify it. So it starts off with the basic um, fields that we see here. And I want to go ahead and add a field that's relevant to me. So I have a Kativ part number that I've you know, put in some of my components. So there's my Kativ part number. I also like to see a couple other things. I like to see the description of the file, right? So I'm going to add that. And maybe uh, one more thing, I'll go ahead and add material, right? And so I can go ahead and reorder these. I'm going to go ahead and move these up. There's my Kativ part number, the description, right? And maybe the material, okay? And I could also tell it to remove, you know, properties that maybe I'm not too concerned about property compliance, link to item. Uh, I'm going to remove link to item just because I don't use that when I'm looking at my Contivia. So I'll click OK, close. All right. And this is what my Contivia looks like. And suddenly, you know, I'm seeing things that I wasn't able to see before. The description, Contivia part number. So with the, when I do a search, right, some of my search results will start to be reflected here. And I'll know that what I'm looking for um, is, is correct, right? Because I'm seeing, you know, part numbers, if I search by part numbers, it's going to show up here. Yeah. So other things we can do here, right, in terms of how we see things, how we customize thing, uh, things here. There's a lot of times I want to see, okay, what changed about this in this last release, okay, or in this la latest version of a file. So very quickly, there's a button here, auto preview. And all this does is show the comments that you guys add when you guys check in, check out, okay. So instead of me looking at this file, going over to the right and looking for the comments, um, I could just simply turn this on and off and I see the comments and I'll see your notes saying that we did this for you know, a certain standard or we made this change and added a whole. Yeah. So um, just a few things there, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. Okay. So I think one of the best tools that we have uh, here inside of Vault is the ability to search. So I'm going to go to the very top level here and start searching for something. I'm, I'm searching for a PDF um, or any document really that has a certain word in it. Okay. And so if you just do a search here, it's going to search every property. It's a very basic search. And so if you click on this pull down, um, what's here is, you know, search subfolders. That's typically on by default. I'm going to uncheck this for just a second. Uh, what it said was search file content, okay? And I'm looking for any document that has the word acetone in it, okay? And so it doesn't give me any results. And so to get a, a more granular search, what we can do is configure Vault to search file content, okay? So simply turning this on, is it gonna get this to work? Okay, so I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna show you what steps you need to take to get this to work. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my vault server, okay, and I am logged in. You're going to need to be in front of the server, okay, and uh, there's a few things we can do, okay. So um, one of the things you'll want to do even before you, you start to log in is just make sure you have iFilters loaded. And so vault installs these iFilters. They're just basically mechanisms that allow uh, windows to search and index information inside of files. And by default, you know, there's a quite a few of these already installed. There might be one for PDFs that you might need to download. So I'll share a link with you guys that will help you uh, put in and install that iFilter. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like in Windows. I'm just going to go ahead and do a window search for index options, right? Indexing options. Okay. And so here's the indexing options. This is a Windows thing. This is how Windows finds your file so quickly. And if I go to advanced, right, I can go to file types and uh, you can tell right away by looking at these specific file types, PDF, uh, DWG, 
right, whether they're being searched or not. So I'm, if I get to the P's here, that's the one that's typically a little bit more difficult. And there might be a PDF filter here. I'll, I'll share a link with you guys. If you install a PDF uh, filter from Adobe, version nine specifically, that's the one that people have the best luck with, okay? And uh, the other thing you'll do is when you get to that, you'll tell it to index the properties and file contents. You'll click OK, and Windows will start indexing that information. Okay, so a quick test, right? Just to see how Windows is working with this, I'm going to go to the desktop, and um, there's a PDF there. Okay, and it's working. Okay, so for Windows, it's working, and so it should be working for Vault as well. All right, so you can see PDF test, and it has the word acetone in it, so it's working. Okay, so you want to make sure it's working. And then this is the part where we go to the server now and turn on this content indexing here. It's going to take a deeper dig into uh, the files that are supported within those I fil filters and show you those uh, results. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the vault itself. This is my AVA vault that I created. And I'm going to tell it to content index, uh, turn on the content indexing service. So I'm not going to do it here. Uh, just because it, it'll start to re-index, but you'll have a choice of yes or no, or start the indexing service, you'll do that. And um, if you have already some PDF files in there, some Word uh, documents already in there, it might make sense to also re-index file properties. Okay, so that'd be the second step. So it'll take a while before you get your results. It takes, I don't know, uh, a, a number of hours. Sometimes it'll take the whole day to re-index those results. But once those are on, Right. We can start looking a little deeper into these documents and tell it to search the file content. And this time, right, I should get some results. Right. And so, OK, you can see it's not part of the name. It's not part of one of the properties. If I go to the preview here, uh, let's look at the latest version. Right. There it is. OK, I'll do another search very quickly for NASTRAN. Right. And this Word document uh, also has the word NASTRAN inside of it. Right. So it's searching in the document. Okay. Better searches, more robust searches. At the same time, you guys want to turn this off when you don't need it. You do a search and you'll get a, a bigger list of results than you may want. So turn it on and off as necessary. Okay. So, um, some more stuff here, right? Some things maybe we don't think about uh, very often, but um, especially when it comes to like doing engineering work, right? So what if you're tasked to go out and replace uh, all the, you know, all these fasteners with a different type of fastener? It's a, it's a very similar fastener that should go, you know, work and not change the form, fit or function. You just want to go and replace them all. This could be, you know, 20, 30, 40, 100 assemblies, okay? You don't want to check them out one by one and replace them. Um, instead, what you'll do is the following. We're going to go ahead and look at um, some components here. Okay, and I have a new dial, right? So this is my new dial and my old dial uh, shows up here. And basically, I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to the edit tab and tell it to replace the dial. So I'm going to choose replace here. And in this dialog box, right, I could, I could add more files. So I could do multiple replacements. But I just want to do this one. So I'm going to click Next, right? And what it shows here is that it found it in multiple assemblies. This could be a really long list. I said 20, 30, 40, 100, right? It's going to the assemblies, and it's going to go ahead and replace those, right? There it is. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And now it wants to know what I want to replace it with. So I'm going to go ahead and browse to it. And this is popping up off screen. I'll go ahead and bring this over. Okay. And so I'm going to go to the same folder or where I know it's at, and I'm going to replace it with the new dial. Okay. So old dial being replaced with the new dial. We'll go ahead and click finish. All right. And it's updating all the links so that the next time somebody opens it, uh, it maintains those links. Okay. So. Um, less commonly used tool, but still really, really helpful. If I do a where used on this dial now, right, it should show that it's no longer being used. 
if I do a where used on the new dial, right, and take a look, it's now being used and called out on these other uh, components. Now I have one of the questions that came in here is uh, when you replace it, will it keep the constraints uh, of the old part? So good question. Um, it's just like replacing a component in Inventor. So you still need to open these up, maybe print them with a the new bill of material, and you might have to fix constraints. Um, if they are a completely different part, you're gonna have to fix constraints still. But at the very least, you got you know a couple place component options or replace component uh, 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 features, right, or, or uh, commands that you're not gonna have to run on each of those assemblies. It'll just be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So yeah, good good question. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at um, a couple other things here, right? If and when you want to send somebody uh, one of your files, right? You could do a pack and go from Inventor, and if you were do, to do that from Inventor, um, it'd be very hard to pick up all the drawings that come with it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select this Inventor PC case. I'm going to go to the file pull down and choose pack and go. Okay. Now in this dialog box, um, I have some choices. It picked up uh, the drawing and everything else connected to it, but chances are this assembly may have a drawing connected with it. This assembly may have a drawing connected with it. And in this list, I don't see any of those drawings. Okay. And this is very similar to what you would get in Inventor. Okay. However, uh, if I go to settings here, uh, I could tell it to include related documentation, right? And so now in the list, what I should see are, there we go, are drawings for some of these other components. So not only is it picking up the top level drawing, but it's going to the sub components. And if they have drawings, it's gonna include those two. Okay. So um, it's the same path and go, just better as the one in Inventor. All right, so I'll go ahead and cancel uh, out of that again. And so uh, with that said, just a couple more things and then we'll move on to a, a slightly different topic. Right? So if you notice here with the same personal computer um, folder structure, right? This might be a folder structure um, that I might wanna reuse. I don't need the stuff that's inside it. Maybe I just need a new version of this, right? So you can see here, um, I'm gonna get rid of uh, this folder here, but I have a new PC I'm gonna create and I need to recreate that, that folder structure. So I've added on a app exchange app, right? That allows me to copy the folder structure. So new Pi folders, um, I can share the link with you guys uh, for that. And basically I can copy just the folder structure, okay? Now, when I go to this folder, I'm gonna paste the new folder structure, right? And so if I go ahead and refresh this here, I now have the same folder structure copied inside of that same folder, right? Uh, it's free, It's uh, it seems so far that uh, I've used it, I've had a couple customers use it, uh, it seems pretty good, right? Bug free, it works for 2017, not quite uh, ready for 2018 just yet. Yeah. So a um, couple more things. I mentioned earlier, you know, the best way to make sure that you're getting the right components in your assemblies is to um, is to insert them directly from Vault. You know, use the add-ins. Well, in 2018, this is a standard feature. In 2017, it's an add-in. Okay. So again, um, I'll share the link if you're on 2017 or older. Uh, but if you right-click, uh, we have the option to insert in CAD. So um, I haven't installed it in 2017. So I'll go ahead and maybe switch over to 2018. Right. And if I right click on a part, I'm gonna go ahead and find a part here, okay? Insert in the CAD. So this will insert it directly into, into your CAD uh, file um, through the Vault client, okay? And this is an add-in in 2017. So you can go ahead and look for that in the App Exchange store, okay? So uh, one more here that I wanna go ahead and take a look at, right? So a lot of times you guys release files and I'm gonna come back to uh, 2017 again um, to use an add-in, an app exchange add-in here. <coughs> and a lot of times you guys release files uh, multiple times. In this case, I've got this drawing that's been released twice. There's a version B, there's a version A of it. And I wanna tell what the difference is. So another add-in here is compare drawings. 
Okay, and if I'm not mistaken, it comes directly from Autodesk as opposed to you know a third party. But if you install this, you can compare multiple versions of these drawings. So I'm going to do that here, and um, okay, I'm going to compare revision B with the prior null revision, and I've you know changed the colors here so that when I go ahead and click compare, and it creates a file for me. Right, I'll be able to tell what those uh, differences are. So here it popped up, it's a DWF of the file, so there has to be DWFs available for these, for, for this to work. But if I go ahead and zoom in on this, you could see the differences in the different colors, right? One has certain dimensions that aren't uh, on the other. Anything in black is common to both. It's just kind of overlaying these on top of each other. Okay. So that's the difference there uh, with these. In this case, the entire view moved, over here, there's missing dimensions. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and come back uh, to this. Right, we're going to go ahead and talk about our thin client customization. Okay, and uh, maybe before um, we do that, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of share the titles of those apps that I mentioned. I'll be able to share these links with you uh, later. I know you won't be able to necessarily write these links down, these URLs but I'll be able to share those with you after the presentation, okay? So thin client customization, okay? This is a tool that other people use, not the engineering department, right? Maybe uh, sales, maybe uh, the shop floor, they might not be as savvy in terms of using the tool. So, you know, if you share the URL, the URL for the, uh, um, for the web looks like this, right? HTTP, your server name goes in here, Autodesk TC, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and click on that now, and I'll show you what they get, okay? They have to know their username, of course. They have to know their password, but they also have to know the server name and the vault database name, okay? So another way you can do this, I'm going to go ahead and log in as myself. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the vault server. All right, and I'll go ahead and put in the vault database. Okay, once I log in, okay, there's a sh there's the URL up here. You're going to want to share this instead, right? So it's the same. It's got the server name, but at the very end, it's got the um, server name again and the database. Okay, so I'll come back to. Um, uh, the presentation for just a second, and you're just basically going to want to make uh, to make a better URL. And once you use it this way, I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Um, let's go ahead and come back to this, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, maybe log out. So let's let's go ahead and log out of that, and you'll see what the difference is. And let's close that as well. Okay, so let's do it a different way. Okay, I'm not sure why that didn't uh, work here, but I'm going to go ahead and paste what I just had just a second ago. Okay. And you'll notice that, you know, those users that we said aren't so tech savvy, they might not remember the server name or the vault, especially if they forget it. It's just in there. It's hard-coded. They can't change it. And all they have to do is worry about their username and password. Okay. So uh, let's come back here for just a moment. Um, another thing you can do to customize this is change a landing page. Okay, so um, the landing page. What I mean by that is if I come back to um, the login, right? There's several images here. There's one here. Um, there's one that takes up most of the screen. When you log in, there's another banner that shows up at the top. And a lot of times, especially when users are looking at this, especially you know in the shop or whatever, they don't know what this is. What is Autodesk Vault? You know, I work for Acme Manufacturing. Um, this has nothing to do with acne manufacturing, right? So uh, we can customize this. So uh, let's take a look at how that happens. So these files are typically located in C program files, the, the path that you see there, and are relevant to the or are uh, relative to the uh, release that you're looking at. So if we uh, go here, right, and open up this folder, this is where these images are kept. Okay, and so. These are all the images that you see on that page. This is going to be on the server, so you're going to need access to that. Okay, and these are what the original images look like. I've kind of you know backed them up to a different folder here, and so here's the hero image. Um, here is the web banner, and here's another uh, signed-in web banner. 
what I've done is I've basically created my own versions of these. So I put them in my own Kati folder. And so here's my, my AMA version of uh, the hero image, one of the web banners, right? One of the sign-in banners. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this and replace the ones that are here. Okay, it's gonna tell me, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and replace these, no problem. All right, so they're all replaced. And so if I come back to that login and I hit F5, right, I've got a customized version of this. There's no doubt that this is for Kati Technologies, right? And so um, like uh, we did before, you know, we can also customize uh, this environment. There's the banner again uh, to also show, you know, just the important columns for us. So we'll take a look at that in just a sec. But that is the next part of this, configuring uh, the property display. All right, so let's come back and start to do some of that. So you have to be an administrator to do this. I'm logged in as an admin. And uh, again, when I start to look here, and I can close this top half and make it a little bit easier to look at, okay? Uh, here's some released uh, components, I believe. There we go. Uh, again, I want to show what's going to be helpful for those guys out in the shop. They look for, the, for this by KT part number. Let's go ahead and customize it and show it that way. So when I'm looking at the administrative options that I just clicked on, right, settings, we can go ahead and control what shows up in these different grids. So there's one for files, there's one for folders. I'm just going to take the time to customize this. This is what shows up now. And when I click on the sprocket, I can go ahead and add things that are relevant to those users. So again, Katib part number is one of those, right? Um, I'll include the description, right? And I'll start moving these up, placing these in a better order, okay? So I'll save this. And I could, I could also enforce this so that, you know, every user is forced to see this and they maybe don't have changes or aren't able to change this, okay? So, I'll choose done. And now when I come back and I'm looking at this, I'm looking at my version with my Katif part numbers in there, right? With the description, right? Just a more relevant way to look at this. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a look at one last thing here, and that is customizing our backup, okay? So in doing this, we want to go ahead and avoid you know any failures especially ones due to something very simple which is somebody leaving adms open so uh, i was logged into the vault there uh, a moment ago and if that's open while the backup tries to run it simply won't run okay now most of our backups we configure to keep maintain two backups at a time they write to like an a folder and a b folder and that's very very common however if this backup batch file just runs and runs and runs and this is open and it fails, you'll have basically two empty folders. So we want to keep two full backups, complete backups on hand. And so in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and tell that backup script to detect the success or failure of a backup. And if it fails, keep the two ones, uh, two that we have on hand. We also want to have it notify us in a number of ways through an event log, through email notification, right? And there's um, a few different ways you can accomplish this, right? So those are some of the different ways. I'm using a third party uh, uh, tool. It's free, SwiftMail, uh, to send me emails, okay? There's Blat, some people do custom uh, VB uh, to do this, accomplish this, but I'm basically gonna show you the script, okay? So let's take a, a quick look at that script and I'll uh, maybe show you and compare the one that uh, comes right out of the box, okay? So this is what comes out of the box. You can see it's very short. All this says, right, is to back it up in a certain location, create my backup in a certain location, okay? Now, the custom one that I'm gonna show you here is a little bit different. We added in a line, okay? The command is task kill, and we can share uh, this batch file with you, okay? You would have to change this to work for yours and change paths and maybe change the release of uh, Vault that's working. But the first thing we wanna do is close any open windows of ADMS console. And this is the command to do that, okay? The next thing we wanna do, okay? And this is optional, but we've 
gone overkill on this one here, on this back. Backup. What it's going to do, it's going to clear the log file. Every time you do a backup, we've told it to create a log file. And that log file is ongoing. So, you know, if you did a backup 365 days of the year, then you have 60, 365 entries in your log. That could be good, um, but it could also make it very long and, and large. So we're telling it every time, just before we run the backup, clear the log. Okay. And that has to do with other things that are going to happen here. So, in this next line, we're saying, hey, start the backup and put it in a temporary folder. So our, our previous two uh, backups are still in an A and B folder. We're just throwing this in a temporary folder, okay? And we've added some code here. This comes from Autodesk directly, this part of it. If the error level is zero, meaning it's good, right? Do this, overwrite the last backup. If there's an error, we'll do this. This is where we defined send error or overwrite backup, right? This next line says overwrite the backup, um, overwrite the last backup. That's what you're gonna do if there's no errors, okay? And uh, first thing it's gonna do, it's gonna create an event in the event viewer and show it as just information and it's gonna give us some information there. IT guys like to look at this and see, you know, did it happen, did it not happen? Um, they can scan this and, and create other notifications, okay? The other thing that's gonna happen next is it's gonna go ahead and start cascading the folders. Um, it's gonna go ahead and remove the last backup, the oldest backup. It's gonna rename uh, the second to oldest backup to, to B, and then it's gonna rename our 10th backup that should be complete by now to A. And we now have two good backups on hand, okay? And then it recreates the temp directory for the next backup, okay? All right, well, how about the email? This is all happening within, you know, overwrite last backup. In the email we have, or in the email portion of this, we have a command being launched. It's launching an application called Swift Mail, okay? And then applying these switches or these uh, uh, settings to it, okay? So I like this one because it's really easy to use, but this one specifically emails me with a vault successful email, okay? And then it finishes up, okay? Send error just sort of does the opposite, right? It maintains, it does not, um, you know, delete the, uh, the uh, B folder and start cascading the folder, it maintains that. And instead it sends me a error email. It also logs in the server an event saying, hey, it failed. And it shows up in red with the typical exclamation part, uh, point that we see, okay? So with that said, I'm gonna go and zoom back out and I'm gonna show you the results of this, right? You, you can really supercharge your, your backup by doing something like this. Uh, you can reach out to us for some help, but I'm gonna show you what the result is here. And in an email, you know, I received today, I did a uh, vault backup, you know, while we were on this, um, it, it did a hot backup. And so it tells me, hey, completed successfully, that's the, the subject there. And it also attached the log for that day. So this is one of the reasons I wanna clear the log. When I open this up, right um, it'll give me the, the, that information regarding the log and if it was you know something that was cumulative from 365 days i'd have to search through a bunch of dates to get you know last night's uh, log so uh, with that said right <coughs> we're going to go ahead and continue here and maybe just summarize just some of the things we did right so we took a look at some productivity tools making sure our workspaces are clean and some ways to do that uh, we took a look at how we can customize the views to make them more relevant for us. We also made our searches better by being able to dig in at a granular level and see what's inside our files. See, look for key words inside of our files and also expose some hidden features and apps that you guys might be able to utilize. Okay. So within our thin client, we customized it and shared our link a little bit differently. We included some more information. We did something similar to what we did with um, our client in that we added properties that were relevant to us and we customized our landing page, right? We branded it. So everybody knows it's our uh, URL that you're looking at, it's our vault. And last but not least, we customized our backups, okay? This is just in order to reduce failures and you can count on you know, receiving email notifications. If for some reason you don't receive an email, time to look at your backup and see what happened. You should receive one that it failed, but um, if you don't receive them at all, start looking at your backups and see what's wrong. Maybe you ran out of space, 
uh, but at least it's some kind of reminder. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, end the presentation here, um, but we'll make some announcements, maybe open it up for some questions. Um, but that is it as far as the, the, the Q&A. We will try to share some of that information with links and uh, other things. So I don't know if uh, you guys got any questions that came in. Yeah, thanks, Javier. So we're going to get into those questions in just a moment here. I, I just want to thank everybody again for joining us today. You know, the majority of you on the call today uh, have and use Vault. So I, I hope that you can take some of these tips and tricks that we've shared uh, and, you know, put those into your workflow. You know, our goal with this is really to make everybody on this call a little bit more efficient with the tools that they already own. Uh, many of you that are on this call, or a few of you at least, don't have Vault's uh, products. You know, if you have Inventor, if you have a product design collection, product design suite, you have Vault Basic. Uh, many of you may not have, have used that. I really recommend taking a look at that because what we've done and, and our experience shows us that customers of ours that use Vault not only uh, you know get to use all the features of Vault, but it really makes their workflow and their entire process a lot more efficient. You know, in some cases, saving tens of thousands of dollars in in man hours uh, just based on not losing or not searching for data. So it's very important that you take a look at that. Uh, if you if you really want some specific information, tap that tip. Um, you know, type that into the chat box. Someone will reach out to you. Now we did see a lot of questions that came in today. Uh, we may not be able to get through all of them. Them. If we do not answer your specific question, we will absolutely follow up with an answer uh, later today. Don't be worried about that. Uh, but some of the questions that have come up, I want to go ahead and um, pass it to Jose for a couple of these. Yeah, there's one that came in through YouTube here, uh, and Javier, uh, it's a user that's just learning Vault, yep. and he asked, how do I import an assembly that was created in, a, in an inventor project that's not vaulted? So he wants to... I, guess grab all the components and make sure that they're all linked correctly when he imports them and then vice versa uh, how do I get a full copy of that assembly out of the vault so that I can share it to, with someone that's not uh, perfect for excellent question so um, you're gonna want to look up um, auto loader okay we have several videos on auto loader, uh, auto loader. Uh, we've done ABA sessions where we use auto loader but basically you want to make sure that the file opens up in the existing project just fine outside of Vault, no errors, anything like that. And then you're gonna use Auto Loader to load that into the Vault, okay? Uh, likewise, you know, the other question was, you know, how do I get them out of Vault? And that um, if you, you know, go back to this session, the part where I showed the pack and go option, that's how you get it out of Vault. You can save it to your desktop, it's no longer vaulted, uh, it's completely free from Vault, and you can start emailing uh, people that, um, set of folders and zip them up um, in an email and send them out. Okay, that was actually for, uh, sorry if I mispronounced that, but Mahidar, uh, okay. sorry, through YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully that answers your question, but uh, we'll move on. If it doesn't, then go ahead and give uh, contact us and we'll go more into it. Uh, so there's a big list of, of questions here. Um, there's a pretty good size of, uh, list here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I think, you know, maybe start with uh, Christine. I don't know if you guys can see those, but Christine's question, can a custom view be shared with other clients? That I know of, no, but I think there might be a utility that somebody's come out with. So I don't know for sure on that. Uh, we could probably find uh, something out on that uh, because it would be something to, um, that would be good to share with other people, right? As opposed to doing it over and over again the same way, okay? And so um, is there uh, is the replace option new to 2017? Uh, the answer is no. It's been there for a while. It's just been hidden. So that's why we wanted to bring that out because I've seen people use it. I've used it myself when I'm consulting on site with, with the customers. Um, it's been there. So take a look under the edit um, uh, pull down. It's not new. Okay. Uh, Joseph has a question. Do all the files need to be in work in progress before replacing? Uh, the answer is yes. You cannot make a change to a file uh, unless they are work in progress. They're locked down otherwise, right? So yeah, uh, they need to be work in progress otherwise. Yeah. Uh, another one that we have here is uh, when I run my backups, does it lock up my vault for my users? Okay, so it depends on the version of vault. Um, but Vault Basic, yeah, it'll get locked up um, and Vault Workgroup, they, they both will lock up the vault during the backup process. You have to wait for it to complete, okay? 
Vault Professional allows for hot backups. That means you know users can be logged in and checking in stuff, checking out. You know it affects performance, so you might notice a performance uh, lag there. But most of the time, you're running them overnight, and if it's a really big backup, it might run into or bleed over into the morning, maybe. Uh, but hopefully, it's not that large. And uh, on that note, actually, uh, with the batch files that we were talking about here, some of the viewers will actually go ahead and try to to work with that. If you uh, just something to keep in mind, if you are working with Workgroup or Basic, if you double click that batch file by accident, it'll start the backup. So just um, you know, keep that in mind when you're uh, editing it yeah. or working with it. Yeah. In fact, if you're going to work with it, if you're going to work with that batch file and edit it, convert it to a text file first, and then when you're ready to test it, convert it back to a batch file just by you know changing the extension. Um, and again, yeah, be careful you know working with it because you could set off a backup and not realize it. So more questions here. Um, any suggestions for deployment creation or copying settings to other users? Uh, similar to Christine's question, and I'm not sure about that. Um, especially, you know, if you're initially uh, pushing this out, you want to make sure you know all the views are the same. Uh, don't know about that. I'm not sure about that. We can probably ask uh, uh, and find out for you. That's uh, from I think uh, Ray Price, I believe. Okay. Do you guys see any more there? Uh, yeah, I have one more here. Uh, what would be the best way to schedule the backups once uh, you know they have once we have the batch file? Uh, I can actually take care of that one. Okay. Um, so through Vault Care and through the implementation, what we do is we usually use Task Scheduler and set up tasks that are uh, set up on a certain date or in time. In this case, either yeah. overnight or on the weekends, in order to to run the backup. Files. Yeah, the best time is very subjective. You're going to want to talk to your IT guys, right? Yeah. Um, somebody did ask a question about the thin client. Does it consume a license? The answer is no. That's the beauty of the thin client is you might only have four licenses of Vault Professional, but a million people can log into the thin client and not consume a license. Okay. There's a few questions I couldn't quite understand um, uh, exactly. Um, hopefully, maybe we can get back to you guys, uh, maybe in some other way, be, the, be uh, you know, besides you know, uh, chatting or texting. Um, but uh, maybe we can send you an email, or you can email us at the email that you see there regarding some of those questions. Okay, and uh, maybe one last one here: uh, the database is it going to be uploaded to the user's disk, C drive, or in a special server? So that's from Jorge. I'm not sure. Uh, what you mean necessarily uh, by that. But when you say uploaded to the user C drive, if you're using Vault, whatever file you're trying to check out gets downloaded to your C drive, uh, yes. So it, it does it that way. It, it downloads it to a workspace on your machine, Okay, if I understood that correctly. Yeah, uh, and if you're talking about content sensor, there's the, the libraries themselves are being hosted on the server of the Vault. You, it can be set up to run that way or it can be set up on the, the user's computer. It really depends on how it's set up. But like Javier mentioned, when that file is, a uh, specific file is being used, it will be downloaded locally to that workspace. Uh, one that came in here, um, is it possible to see a JPEG or PDF content in thumbnail uh, history in the Vault client? Um, you can certainly see like history of JPEG. So if, if the JPEG has been edited, modified and changed, it's just another version of the file, and you could look at the version history. Uh, the thumbnail, uh, I'm not so sure about, um, mostly because it doesn't keep the thumbs.db file that I know of. It doesn't necessarily keep it or version that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me, everybody. Uh, I see that there are some more questions here. Uh, just take a moment, type any final questions that you may have. Uh, like I mentioned, we're not going to be able to get through all of these because there are such a high volume that have come in uh, through YouTube and through Facebook and, and through this GoToWebinar. So I appreciate that. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to finalize this. Uh, any any questions that we have not answered, we will get back to you. So uh, we'll reply in an email. Uh, if you guys want to talk about it further, we'd be happy to do that with you as well. Please email lifeline at kativ.com or uh, you can email uh, you know, your your account manager if you are a current Kativ customer. I just want to thank everybody again for joining us. I hope you got great value out of this, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, next week in Kativ Autodesk Virtual Academy.